Today we are going to talk about watercolor techniques and I am so excited because this is my absolute favorite art material. Um, I'm gonna go through what you need to have in front of you first, okay? So obviously you're going to need watercolors. I have a tray of watercolors that has 12 colors in it. You may have a set that has fewer colors. That is completely fine. We can mix these to make other colors, okay? So I have both trays next to me. You only need one. I also obviously have my water. I have a watercolor brush. And what you'll notice about a watercolor brush is that it has a very thin tapered tip to it. It's very pointed, okay? Watercolor brushes are typically made with horse hair and that's what makes them so soft and absorbent. Um, the, the type of watercolor brush that I'm using is a size eight. So that's kind of a medium sized watercolor brush. You can use whatever came in your watercolor set. You do not need to have a brush that looks like this, um, but it is something that is more absorbent. I also have some kind of unusual supplies with me as well. So first one is salt. This is the type of salt that you probably have in your kitchen. Um, we are going to actually be sprinkling that on part of our painting. I have a small piece of saran or plastic wrap. So if you have that at your house, you definitely wanna take some of that out. You could also use um, a Ziploc bag that's been cut up. That's totally fine. I have a box of tissues next to me, and that is something that I will use to help me kind of absorb some paint and use a technique with. The last thing I have is a white crayon, and if you don't have a crayon, that's okay. I also brought out an oil pastel. I grabbed kind of a lighter color. I grabbed a light purple from my set. So either option is fine. If you have both, that is even better. And your crayon does not need to be white. I just wanna show you a cool technique that you can use with this. All right, so that is all of my materials aside from my paper. So what I've done is I've taken a piece of Bristol board paper. You can use whatever paper you have on hand at home. If you have Bristol board though, that is gonna make this a lot easier because it is thicker, it's sturdier, and it's a little bit more absorbent. What I did was I measured my paper. You do not need to measure it. I just like when things are really kind of evenly spaced. I measured with a ruler um, so that I ended up with four sections on one side of my paper, four sections on the other, and that way I end up with a total of eight different techniques that I can use for my watercolor techniques. Underneath, I wrote each different type of technique, so we will go through this as we go through each technique step by step. I split it down the middle, and again, I measured this. So my boxes are two inches wide, okay, and three and a half inches across. You can make them however you want. You can do this in your sketchbook. What I'm gonna be doing is cutting this out, and I can actually do that. I don't have scissors near me, but what I'm gonna do is cut this out, and I'm gonna glue it in my sketchbook, okay? So the first technique that I am going to be talking about is wet on dry. And that's a technique that you have been using since you were first ever using paint or ever using watercolor paints. A lot of us have used them before. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wet my brush because that's how I unlock the pigment that's in the paint. And I think for this, I'm gonna use a red. And so the more water I mix into my paint, the more moisture I'm adding to it, and so I'm unlocking it, and now you can see that it is on the tip of my brush. So a wet on dry technique really just means that I'm using wet paint on dry paper. Okay, so our next technique is wet on wet. So if wet on dry was wet paint on dry paper, wet on wet is going to be wet paint on wet paper. You guessed it, okay? So I'm gonna take some water, and I'm just using plain water. So it's gonna be like a clear, shiny layer. You probably cannot even see it in the video. A clear, shiny layer that I've put on my paper. And now I'm gonna add some pigment. To this, I'm gonna add some dark blue. So I'm loading my brush up with some pigment, and then once I start kind of dotting it in, you can see that it's starting to really spread out very beautifully almost like tie-dye, okay? This also looks really beautiful when you start adding other colors into it. I'm gonna use my other blue in my set. It's a little bit lighter. That is so beautiful. That is a really cool technique. 
So I'm just dotting it kind of in between. So that is an example of a wet on wet technique. All right, for a dry brush technique, I'm gonna need to take one of my tissues. We're gonna use these again. And I'm gonna dry, dry my brush off. I'm not drying it off completely. I'm just taking most of the moisture out. And I'm gonna go into a color, I'm gonna go back into my red actually. And I've loaded some pigment up on my brush. It still has some moisture in it, it isn't totally dry. But what I'm gonna use is my brush And I can get even more pigment on there if I need to. And I'm going to just add some pigment to my paper. Now, my brush is drying out, and that's actually intentional. That's on purpose, okay, because it is called a dry brush technique. I'll hold this up for you so you can see it. But a dry brush technique is basically one where you don't have that much moisture on the page. This is a great type of technique to use for grassy textures or fur, hair, anything that has kind of like that tapered thin edge to it, thin line, dry brush technique is wonderful for that. All right, so this is where our crayon or oil pastel are gonna come in. I am going to draw a heart. I have done that with my white crayon. You could do that with any color, okay? And then on this one, I am going to draw a smiley face. Okay, I'm gonna get any excess pieces off. So right now you can only see the smiley face, you can't see the heart that I've drawn. But once I go in, I'm gonna use some pink for this one. I'm taking a wet brush, putting it in my paint, and what you'll see is that the wax actually starts to resist the paint, okay? So the wax is something that creates a layer between the paper and the paint, preventing it from going through. Um, I didn't use enough wax here, which is why the paint is kind of covering that up. All right, and then let me do the same thing. I am going to use my pink again, right here. And you can see that the water is actually, the moisture is completely missing where the smiley face is, okay? So if I had just used a little bit more wax and layered my crayon on more, I would have had a full outline of that heart. Okay, we are moving on to salt, okay? So for this, I'm gonna choose a darker color. I'm gonna use my dark green. Really wanna load that up. So I'm gonna take more water. I really wanna get a lot of pigment on my paper for this. Now I'm using a little bit of blue. These are analogous colors. I'll use a little light blue too over here. Really loading up my paper. All right, so now that I've done this, I am going to take my salt, and again, this is just the type of salt that you have in your kitchen, and I'm gonna sprinkle it on the paper, okay? I'm not putting too much, it's not like I'm dumping the whole thing onto there. I'm sprinkling it on, and what that's gonna do is it's going to dehydrate the painting. This is so cool. So dehydrating it, meaning that salt is something that makes us very thirsty. Think about if you have like a really salty snack, like a bag of potato chips. You're probably gonna be thirsty afterwards, right? That's because the salt is dehydrating your system. You need water to rehydrate it. So what the salt is doing right now is it's sucking up all the moisture that I just put on my paper. And once it dries and I brush the salt away, it's gonna leave tiny white specks behind, which is gonna be really, really beautiful. All right, so on to our next one. This one's pretty simple. We're gonna do a saran wrap technique. I'm gonna take some red, put that on my paper, add a little more moisture. And the piece of saran wrap that I had brought over, I'm gonna kind of crinkle that up Press it down and I'm gonna let that dry with the saran wrap on it. When it dries and I peel it off, I'm gonna be left with a beautiful kind of crinkled texture behind. All right, so my next technique has to do with tissues. I'm gonna take some purple. You can use whatever colors you want. And now what I'm gonna do is show you guys how 
you can use the tissue to absorb some of the moisture that's in the paint and it does leave behind a really beautiful texture that almost looks like tie-dye, okay? So I've taken away some of the pigment and some of the moisture with the tissue. So you can start to see how some of my other techniques are drying as well. We're gonna move on to the last one, which is a value scale or gradient. They both mean the same thing. Remember, value means shading. So we're really gonna be shading with the watercolors. Now, usually when we shade with like a colored pencil, an oil pastel, a regular pencil, we're adding more and more pigment to our paper, right? We're adding more and more pencil to make it darker, more colored pencil to make it darker, more vibrant. With watercolor, you're gonna start with a lot of pigment on your brush, I'm using pink, but to lighten it, you're gonna start actually mixing more and more water into your paper. And what that's gonna do is create this really beautiful gradient that goes from dark to light. I can go back and add more pigment at the end to make it even darker. And just like that, I'm gonna let it drip a little bit. Just like that, I've created a gradient just by adding more and more water to my watercolor, okay? So what I would like you to do is let this dry. We are going to then cut it out and glue it into our sketchbooks, all right? Can't wait to see your flower project with the watercolors on them.